Hey, Trevor Matthews from the Refrigeration Mentor. Again, here on day three of Chaventa 2022. It's been such an amazing event, meeting so many amazing people. And today, I'm here at the Temperite booth with the president, Jim Nani himself. How you doing, Jim? Doing fine, very much. Thanks for having me. Very nice to meet you. As a technician, I worked on many of your products over the years, which is really cool. And what I found in the industry that even me when I first started, I didn't really understand the oil side of the system, which is the most important side for the compressors. And I'd love you to take me through some of your products that you have and uh, explain um, where technicians can find maybe some resources at the end. Okay, yeah. The, uh, on our website, we have a, in the resources section, we have uh, some instruction manuals about how to uh, replace a filter. Yeah. That's probably the most common thing that needs to be done. So a uh, person can look on our website and find that, and uh, it, it would help them, yes. Yeah, awesome. So why I came to Chilventa is to learn more and more about the CO2 products that are out there, the different CO2 systems, and I know that in North America, it's starting to grow, CO2. So why don't we talk about some of the products you have for CO2? Sure, sure. We'll start with the very top. That would be our... Uh, oil separators for transcritical CO2 applications. Um, our standard line is rated for 140 bar. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and yeah. Yes, and uh, we have uh, some that are rated for as much as 160 bar. Wow, Yeah, I, but, I didn't even know they had their separators that high in pressure, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so it, uh, we, we, this is one of our earlier design going back to the uh, 2010, 2008 era. Yeah. And uh, what we have seen since then is the systems just keep getting larger and larger and yeah. larger. So uh, we also have to keep up and continue to design larger and even larger vessels uh, yeah. to keep up with these things. Yeah, exactly. And, and I've worked on many of these over the years when I was doing on HFC systems, but like I said earlier, oil management is so important and working with the manufacturers of the equipment and getting to the resource section is so important. You don't only have oil separators, you also have reservoirs. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. Uh, the oil separator will separate the oil out of the refrigerant gas and the oil will fall to the bottom of the vessel. And then uh, there is a, a pickup tube, kind of like a straw going down to the bottom of the vessel. And it's just using high side pressure to push that oil back to, uh, in this case, a oil reservoir. It, okay. It's just, you know, spare capacity for yeah. when the, the, the compressor needs it. Typically a reservoir would be used on a multi-compressor system yeah. because uh, certain compressors may need or may not need oil. So drawing it from one common uh, reservoir is the best way to handle it. In smaller systems, if it's just a, a one compressor application, probably won't see a uh, oil reservoir. Yeah. Probably go direct from the separator to the oil level control that's monitoring the oil level inside the uh, crankcase housing. Yeah, so that's a very good point. You'll see some systems that will have a, a reservoir, just like Jim said, and some that you will not, but you will need some special device on that compressor, like we talked about before, an OMB, an OMC, a Carwan. There's lots of different manufacturers with those oil level controls, so it's important to understand that. What are some of the things that you've seen over the years that maybe technicians miss with the oil separation or oil separator? Because I've heard that, you know, the separators will separate it to a point, but if your oil temperature is way too hot or if it's way too cold because of system related issues, mm -hmm. that separator will not function properly. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, the oil separator is, it has a nominal rating of about 98.5% wow. efficiency of separating the oil out of the gas. Oh, that's a really good value, but keep in mind that also means that about a percent and a half is getting passed at all times. If the system is operating at a really low load, say maybe at night when you know not a lot of doors in the refrigerator are being opened and closed, the demand for cooling goes way down and there might be three or four or more compressors on the rack that are not needed, so you only have one running. Uh, that obviously means a really low velocity flowing through the evaporator. Yeah. That low velocity may not be enough to push that oil back through the rest of the evaporator 
into the suction side. So people will say, hey, I came in this morning and the, the compressor was off on low oil. How come? Well, that could be the reason is that it might have uh, <coughs> shut off because all the oil eventually got out into the evaporator and uh, wasn't enough velocity to bring it back. And I love that. See, it's very important to understand the systems that you're working on because if you have six or seven compressors and only two, one or two of them are running, you don't have enough velocity and the oil sticks in the system. As Jim said, those compressors could go off like the Corsense, the Centronics, whatever your oil level, uh, oil right. uh, protection is. And then you come in and reset, everything starts up because you got more load in the system. And right. then that's kind of like a trip that happens. But guys will just say, oh, it was a nuisance trip. There's no such thing as nuisance oil trips. Something in the system caused that oil to uh, those compressors to trip off. Yeah, yeah. And then another common uh, mistake that a uh, technician might make is he sees this off on low oil. He goes and he adds more oil yes. into the system. And then when activity increases in the store, all these doors are being open and closed. The demand goes up more compressors kick in and the velocity goes way up. All that oil that is out in the evaporator comes rushing back and it yeah. floods the compressor. Yeah, and uh, thank you for pointing that out because that is very important. We've seen this time and time again where we add a pile of oil and, or technicians add a pile of oil to the system and it comes back and then it causes damage, more damage to the system. Right. So really be aware of what's going on. I do have one quick question mm -hmm. for you. Um, when someone starts up a new rack and a new system with a temperite uh, oil separator, what is your recommendation on when they should replace that? Should it be after 24 hours of runtime, 48 hours? Because I know it's OEM specific, but what about you? What do you recommend to the OEMs that should be replacing it, or to technicians that are starting up systems? It says on uh, most of our labels, replace filter after 24 to 48 hours of op initial operation. You just don't know when the system is being built did they use clean materials? Did they purge the lines? Uh, you know, there could be a lot of dirt assembled, in, uh, built in when the system is finally up and running. Uh, generally, the uh, uh, manufacturers that uh, build a lot of racks, they have their processes down pretty good. Yeah. They're using clean materials. Yeah, they're purging right. the lines. Yeah. Chances are, it may not need a filter change after those first 24 to 48 hours. We have some customers who have such clean systems, uh, they don't have to change a uh, filter at all. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's um, so important to understand and work with the manufacturer of that equipment to find out what the recommendation is for it. Because when you have a clean system, you have a really good functioning system. When you have a dirty system, you don't have a very good functioning system. Right. Jim, I want to thank you so much for taking All the right. time to meet with me. And, and if you're out there and you're working on oil systems, go check the Temperite website out. Go check the resource section to really learn on how all these products work. Thank you so much. All right, Trevor, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it, something that you can use in your daily life. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell button because when you do click the bell button, it will notify you anytime new videos are released. Also, check out the Refrigeration Mentor webpage at refrigerationmentor.com where I'll have all the different trainings, upcoming events, the different podcasts I've been on, as well as the Refrigeration Mentor podcast. If you want to check that out on Apple, Spotify, Google, any service provider of your choice. Super excited to see you at the next video. Now, let's get a conversation going.